why the universe is all about you. So to the best of my knowledge, this has never been shared anywhere else. Because what I'm about to explain is why the universe has to be conscious and why physics itself would require an infinite universe to have consciousness, which by the way will explain why the universe is all about you. Let's go. And don't forget, if you like this kind of thing, do all the things with the buttons. Thank you, I love you. So why would an infinite universe require consciousness for that infinite universe to work? So infinity is a pretty big place, right? Goes on forever. So in order for you to have an infinite universe, you have to have infinite energy. But the simple fact is that we can't have infinite energy. So why can't we have infinite energy? Well, the answer to that question is pretty simple and pretty self-evident. When you have infinite energy, it tends to fill up every one of the containers that you put in front of it immediately. And infinite energy would immediately span to every nook and cranny in the universe, filling it with absolute energy. So you can't have infinite energy or you can't have a universe because what is the one single thing that you need for absolutely every science that we have to work? From physics to chemistry to electromagnetic magnetism to biology to gravity to even psychology. What is the one thing that if it's not there, nothing works? That one thing is a difference in potential. If there isn't any difference in potential of energies in any of the fields, none of the universe works. So even in an infinite universe, you can only have near infinite energy, not infinite energy. Even in a universe that's expanding because we're not expanding at an infinite rate. So how can we have an infinite universe with only near infinite energy? And that, my friends, is why the mechanism of consciousness must enter the picture. Enter consciousness as a mechanism to collapse the wave functions that are necessary, thereby only rendering the portions of the field that are required to create 3D space time if consciousness needs to access the data. You can't have infinite energy and you can't have an infinite 3D universe without infinite energy. So it's the consciousness that limits that ability. It's consciousness that turns the math into matter. Now Einstein had a problem with the idea that when no one was looking at the moon, it wasn't really there, which is not only what quantum mechanics espouses, proves in multiple experiments. Of course, Einstein didn't know about the aliens up there. <laughs> I love throwing those little things into these. All jokes aside, what better way would there be for an infinite universe to let an infinite number of quantum wave functions buzz away until only a portion of them needed to be rendered into 3D space-time because consciousness needed to access the data? With consciousness, it's only the portion of 3D space-time that's needed at the moment that it gets rendered out of the quantum foam. The rest of it just remains as wave functions of potential. But here's the beautiful part about the portion of the universe that does get rendered into reality because consciousness wants to experience the data because that could be you looking out upon a beautiful sunset. That could be you looking into a field of stars in our galaxy. You are connected to the one field of consciousness. You collapse wave functions based on your decisions. And so the universe, in part, renders for you. Tell me this ain't about you. Your consciousness is what this whole thing is all about. This whole thing is for your enjoyment. Don't ever forget that.